Happy Easter. Easter! Or should I say, Hoppy Easter? Oh dear. Get it? <laughs> I do love an Easter fun though. Well, <laughs> me too, but unfortunately, I only got one pair of these floral Easter bunny ears, and I don't want you to get jealous, so I think I'll take them off. I think that's a good idea, yeah. <laughs> I'm Josh. <laughs> and I'm Gallia. Welcome to Easter at Kingsgate Online. It's so good to have you with us today. Whether you're part of our online family or perhaps you're joining us because someone who's part of Kingsgate invited you to check out this special online Easter celebration. Yeah, either way, we're so glad you're with us. We're streaming today's service from our Kingsgate Peterborough campus and we hope that wherever you are, you'll enjoy joining in, watching our special Easter presentation and hearing why Easter is really good news for us all and to seeing people being baptised too. There's also a special Easter activity for children to enjoy over on the kids area of our website so why not check that out if you have children with you. For all of us our service will be starting very soon so get ready we're in for a great time together. that God would send His only Son to save the lost. The cost so great, the stripes on His back carrying the weight of our sin. The way was being paved that we might be saved from the state of the world we are living in. With love in His eyes, a sword pierced through His side, nails through His hands, His feet. Hung on a cross, crucified, His life would be lost. So for all time, 
Jesus would set us free. As He breathed His last breath, He forgave those who cried out for His death. But death was not the end, for the grave could not contain the Son of God, Jesus, for there was too much power in His Name. So victorious He rose, let's stand before the King as we celebrate our Saviour, Jesus Christ, alive again. Oh, hero of heaven. 
you and you break every chain oh god you have done great things we dance in your freedom
for the bleeding you bore, for the tears, for the blood that was willingly poured, for the merciful, wonderful majesty of your love.
this weekend that Jesus is alive. Millions of people around the world are being, being celebrating as well. The, the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So why don't we give the hero of heaven one more cheer. That is why we can celebrate here today. Well, a very, very big welcome to you all, especially if you're here for the very first time and for those watching online as well. You are so welcome. And a particular welcome to family and friends of those who are getting baptized later on in the service. We really hope that you all feel very at home. My name's Karen, I'm one of the leaders here. And on behalf of Pastor Dave and the team, we really are thrilled that you are joining us to celebrate this Easter weekend. Well, before you sit down, why don't you turn around and say hi to a few people. And for those online, I really hope that you're sitting comfortably as well. Well, the theme of our Easter celebrations this weekend is freedom. And, you know, often we hear a recurring theme of those who have just enjoyed the freedom that Jesus Christ has brought to their lives. They often use this phrase, it feels like I see the world in color or even technicolor. And that was definitely my experience when I gave my life to the Lord many, many years ago. And so Kezia is gonna come and sing a song that picks up on this theme of color in our lives. So why don't we welcome her as she comes to sing.
But Father, that is our prayer this weekend. For everybody in the room, for everybody watching, that there would just be a fresh sense of your life, your love, your freedom, your colour, that our eyes would be opened afresh just to that wonderful sacrifice that you made on the cross so that we could live a life of great freedom and liberty and joy and strength, no matter what circumstances we're facing this Easter time. We just thank you that we can be assured of your wonderful presence in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. Well, why don't we thank Kezia and the band and the dancers as well for putting that song together. Well, there's always a lot going on in the life of the church, and so we're now going to head over to Church News, where Simeon and Irina are going to give us a little bit more detail. So let's watch this. Happy Easter! Spring is finally here. Finally, this is so nice after such a long, cold winter. I know, the birds, the flowers, the sunshine. It just feels like new beginnings. I love springtime. And Guys! <laughs> sunny days are getting longer and the nights are getting shorter. I just love... Guys! Background's not working. Oh, oh, right. Sorry about that, everyone. We're actually in the studio, a bit cold outside today. Can we get a new background? Maybe somewhere nice and warm? No. No. Okay, then how about the Kingsgate studio then? Great, thank you. Let's get this back on track. Welcome to Kingsgate, everyone. Hope you're really enjoying the service so far. We have stuff happening for all ages. If you're in year seven to 13, then check this out. Chicken or egg? Chicken or egg? Chicken or egg? Oh, I just don't know! What are you doing? Are you trying to work out that age-old question by any chance of what came first, the chicken or the egg? Because you know there's no answer, right? It's a cyclical question. Classic causality dilemma. I'm sorry, it's nothing that deep. I'm just trying to figure out what I'm going to have for lunch tomorrow. Oh, it's always food with you. On a serious note, if you do find yourself pondering big questions about life, maybe not the chicken and egg, but things like, what's my purpose? Is there life after death? Then other really big questions, then perhaps Alpha might be for you. Yeah, Alpha is a fantastic course that lets you ask any questions you might have in a relaxed, friendly environment. Look at this. Millions of people have explored the meaning of life by doing the Alpha course, so if you're interested in finding out more, just visit the website. As I said earlier, it's always food with you. I can't help it if I love Easter eggs. They are extremely tasty. Please tell me you're not going to start cracking egg jokes. Did you just tell me not to crack egg yolks? Oh boy, you just can't help yourself, can you? I promise, no more egg yolks. I mean jokes. In fact, I'll put the chocolate away because I want to talk about our new series that starts next week. We're going to be looking at who God is and how we can know him personally. That's right. It's going to be a fantastic series that the whole church is going through together. So take a look at this. Our God is a God who saves. When we're drowning in our fears, anxieties, our tears, he rescues us, lifts us up from the waves, beauty, 
for ashes in a beautiful exchange. This is our God who loves us faithfully, freely. His love transforms and changes, brings us hope and healing. A God who loves more than words could ever say. He knows our deepest thoughts yet loves us anyway. Our God is strong, victorious. He's the creator of the universe. He is glorious. Our friend, comforter, companion and guide crying out to you now, his arms open wide. This is our God. Kids, we need your help. The Ice High Jungle is in danger. Nobody knows where the king is or even who he is and we need to find him fast. That's right, we need your help to find the king. You will collect clues from different animals along the way. Each week you'll be adding to your jungle poster or your temple key as we learn more about the king. Maybe you've already met the king, that's why we really need your help. Don't miss out on this epic quest. Join the adventure in person at one of our campuses or online at kingsgate.church forward slash kids. So kids, grab your explorer's hat and let's go! Well, that's it for Church News. We'd love to see you next week. Yeah, we meet every Sunday, both in person and online. Check out the website for all the details. You'll also be able to find out what's happening for children and youth in all our campuses. Enjoy the rest of the service and have a great Easter. Bye! Bye. Happy Easter, everyone. How many of you would like to travel light? Or anyone end up packing everything but the kitchen sink and you end up kind of taking a bit too much stuff? And some of you are asking a more important question, what on earth has this got to do with Easter? Well, as you've probably picked up, the theme of our Easter service is freedom. And I don't know about you, but I think it's true that we can go through life feeling kind of weighed down, like life is heavy, like we're carrying too much baggage. But what we're here to celebrate today is that 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ died on the cross, literally, he was weighed down, he bore our sin, our death, all the consequences of it, in order that you and I might be free. And then, yeah, and then on what we know as Easter Sunday, he rose from the dead, triumphant over death so that you and I could enjoy a glorious life of freedom. Jesus himself made this stunning declaration. This is for all of us. If the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Free indeed. What about you? I want to live in the good of all that Jesus came to purchase for me. And so there's lots we could say about freedom, but I've got these four bags representing Uh, specific areas, if you like, of weight or baggage that we can carry in our lives. The first of which is the baggage of our past mistakes. The baggage of our past mistakes. How how many of you have ever made any mistakes in the past? Yeah, I've made many. Talking of uh, one, uh, many years ago, I was driving Karen's car. And I went into the garage uh, to fill up with fuel. And as I drove away, I'm not very mechanical, but even I knew something was badly wrong. The the engine was sort of chuggering, and it, it it was just horrible. And I had this awful thought. Have you ever had one of those moments? Oh, no. I think what I've done, I've just filled up this diesel engine with petrol. Now, a number of thoughts went through my mind. First is, I felt so cross with myself, I felt embarrassed, and worst of all, it was the thought of having to go back and face Karen. (laughs) And go on bended knee and beg for forgiveness for having messed up her beautiful car. But the reality is, we all do things in life, we can all say and do things, can't we, that can do actually far more damage than to a car. They can damage ourselves. 
They can damage our relationship with other people and something we're maybe not always aware of, but ultimately they damage the most important person in the universe, God himself. It's like it brings a separation between us and God. And as a result, we can feel things like guilt. Now, guilt isn't in and of itself necessarily bad. It lets us know there's something wrong. But if we don't deal with guilt, if we repress it or bury it, it's there nonetheless, and it is still weighing us down. Guilt has a cousin called shame. Guilt says, I've done wrong. Shame says, I am wrong. And sometimes we experience a huge sense of shame, a sense of embarrassment. We feel like we want to hide. Sometimes because of what we've done wrong, but sometimes because of the wrongs that have been done to us. And so some of you may be here today and you're aware you're carrying, if you like, a weight of shame, maybe through no fault of your own, but it weighs heavily on you nevertheless. The wonderful news of Easter is that Jesus Christ came to deal with the weight of our past mistakes, our sins, our failures, and all the guilt and the shame by dying on the cross. Literally, he, he took our place. The only fully innocent person who's ever lived throughout history allowed himself, as it were, to be punished in our place that we once and for all might be forgiven and set free. Wonderful little verse in Colossians chapter 2 says, In doing so, he forgave all our sins. He cancelled the record of the charges against us, and he took it away by nailing it to the cross. Wonderful, wonderful exchange going on there. Notice he didn't say uh, he forgave some of our sins. He forgave all of our sins. The big sins, the little ones, the ones we are aware of, not aware of. Sins against ourselves, others, and against God to free us from that heavy weight of guilt and shame. That's why I love Easter so much. And I particularly love this Easter um, because um, I'm celebrating, I've just celebrated my 40th birthday. Some of you looking, is it, no, some of you looking really confused right now. I'm not talking about my physical birthday. I'm talking about my spiritual birthday. You see, in the run-up to Easter 1983, I made a decision to invite Jesus Christ into my life, and I, I asked him to forgive me, to cleanse me, and he came in, and literally, I experienced almost like that, all that weight of my, my shame, my guilt, all my past mistakes. It was like my slate was, uh, was wiped clean, and I felt for the first time in my life fully free on the inside. And that's not just for me. Wherever you're at today, whether you're uh, uh, already a Christian, you've messed up, you're away from God, whether you've never come to Christ, I want to invite you, just like I did 40 years ago, to take your past mistakes and all the consequence of that and once and for all, lay it at the foot of the cross and in exchange, receive... Whoops, wrong one. <laughs> we'll get to that in a minute. Forgiveness. Forgiveness, knowing God's unconditional, complete forgiveness in our lives is the most beautiful and precious gift. And once we know that forgiveness, it does help us experience all the other blessings. The second thing we need to get free from is we need to get free from this weight of anxiety. Now, it may not look very big, but I want to tell you, this is a heavy weight. It's a weight that we can carry in our daily lives. Uh, right now, you may be feeling heavy because of what's happened over the last three years, the, the heaviness from the pandemic still lingering, or, you know, backdrop of wars and cost of living crisis, or there may be some very specific weights that you feel you're carrying right now, things that are causing you to feel anxious, health challenges, concerns about family, um, issues to do with maybe prospect of exams, or an uncertain job market, or pressures at work. So many things can weigh us down. And the thing I'm talking about, not, it's not a mild concern, I'm talking about when these things literally, you go to bed worried about it. You wake up in the middle of the night and it's still there. You wake up in the morning, you still feel heavy. 9.30 p.m., I remember the time, uh, Thursday past week, about 10 days ago, I had a phone call from my dad's 
best friend. He never rings me. As soon as I heard his voice, I felt my anxiety begin to kind of, whew. and then it got worse when I heard the word hospital. Uh, it turned out that my dad had, had collapsed and had been taken to hospital. And although this friend tried to reassure me that he didn't think it was anything serious, nonetheless, I could feel like the fear and anxiety begin to kind of get a hold of me. Anyone else experience that? Sudden news comes. And at that moment, I knew I had a choice. I mean, he said, there's nothing you can do. You can't come and visit. And so I felt like I had no control over the situation. I couldn't do anything about it. So I had a choice. I can either... Um, spend all night worrying and letting the fear just dominate me. It won't help that at all. Or I can make a choice, and the choice I made was, I'm going to hand over this worry, this anxiety, to the Lord. It's a weight I can't bear. I almost remember saying, God, this is, I can't carry this, so I give it to you. I went to sleep at peace. I woke up at peace. By midday, the next day, I had a a uh, chirpy phone call from my dad saying all was well, he'd been cleared, and now he's running around doing allotment, and he's well again. And, and the, the best part of the story, of that, of course, is that dad is well, but actually the point is that I had a moment where I could choose when it wasn't, it wasn't necessarily going to be well, what was I going to carry? And the wonderful news of Easter is that Jesus came, literally, as it were, to bear the weight of anguish, extreme torment upon himself in order that at a very deep level we could enjoy not just the spiritual freedom from our sins, but if you like, emotional, mental, psychological freedom from the weights that can bear down on, down on us. If you know anything about the, the, uh, the passion narrative, the run up to Easter, the Gospels talk about the extreme torment that Jesus went through. We see him, for example, in the Garden of Gethsemane, so full of anguish, and that's the word that the writers use, anguish. In other words, not just a little bit of anxiety, but extreme, acute anxiety. So much so, at the prospect of what was to come, it says he, he, he shed almost like um, sweat drops that were like blood. Have you ever felt such anguish? Jesus went to the uttermost of human anguish and suffering. And then it's hard to imagine what he felt as his back was being scourged or as he was actually being hung on the cross in the most degrading and shameful and painful way. What was going on emotionally and mentally? But the good news, he is, wasn't doing it in vain. He was doing it for our sakes. The Old Testament prophet Isaiah talks about the exchange. It says, the punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds or his stripes, we are healed. The word uh, translated peace there is the biblical idea of shalom, which more, means more than just peace of mind. It means well-being, wholeness, peace in every part of our lives. Jesus went to the cross for you and I in order that we might enjoy his peace at a very deep level. That's why I love the fact that on the first Easter, um, when Jesus appeared to his disciples in the upper room, the first words he spoke to them, first words, as it were, back from the dead, he said these words twice, peace be with you, peace be with you. And I believe that's what he wants to say over us today. Come and give me the heavy weight of your anxiety and your fear and let me give you my peace, my shalom, my well-being. So I want to give you an invitation this Easter. Whatever is burdening you, why don't you take the heavy weight of anxiety, lay it at the foot of the cross, and now we're ready to receive his peace in every area of our lives. There's a third weight. It's this big, heavy baggage, piece of baggage, and it's one that sometimes we're aware of more than others, and it's a sense of emptiness, a sense of life just not having meaning or purpose, and it can drain us, it can feel wearying. Talking of emptiness, there was a time in my life when um, I used to like driving, and I like to kind of drive slightly on the edge in terms of filling up for fuel. Um, how many of you ever live, you, you know, you're happy for it to go down to the red zone as long as it doesn't run out. Well, that, that says something about me. Anyway, so I used to do it quite a lot, and it was all fine. And then one day, I was driving around Peterborough Parkway, coming down the slip road. It was in the red zone. I thought, I've got some more miles, and guess what happened? It stopped. 
How embarrassing. It's one thing, though, to let our cars run on empty. It's another for our lives to be running on empty. You see, it's possible to live with an emptiness. Uh, some of the stories of the people who've been baptized, I noticed as I was reading, um, they talked about having like a, an emptiness or a hole, a God-shaped hole on the inside of them. And it's possible to have this sense of emptiness, this sense of a lack of purpose and meaning, um, even if things outwardly look fine. Uh, Bernard Levin, described as the most famous journalist of his day, himself not a Christian, wrote, countries like ours are full of people who have all of the material comforts they desire, yet lead lives of quiet and at times noisy desperation, understanding nothing but the fact that there is a hole inside them. And that however much food and drink they pour into it, however many possessions they stuff it with, however many well-balanced children and loyal friends they parade around the edges of it, it aches. You see, the reality is, it doesn't matter how successful we are, how many life goals we may tick off, how many items on your bucket list, if you have one, that you, fulf that you uh, fulfill. Life without ultimate meaning, without ultimate purpose, feels empty. That's what I experienced prior to becoming a Christian. I had a sense of a void. Outwardly, I had a lot going for me, actually. You wouldn't have known it looking at me from the outside. But inside, I knew there was something missing. And so in order to fill that emptiness, I actually tried to fill it, and we often do this, with substitute things that didn't ultimately satisfy. Some of them were um, really harm harmless you know, like supporting Manchester City. I mean, harmless. But, um, but didn't actually satisfy, particularly when they lost a lot, as they were then. But other things I did were actually harmful. I filled my life. I, I, I was involved in stuff that was harmful to myself, very often harmed other people, and of course, ultimately, was a false substitute. But then when I became a Christian, I invited the Lord in. Not only did I experience a sense of forgiveness and peace, but I experienced an incredible sense of almost like fulfillment as the presence of the risen Jesus came into my life. And I could identify with the words of Jesus himself who said, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Back to the song we heard earlier. You know, it was like my black and white world suddenly became full of color. And so today, I want to invite you to take this baggage of emptiness, this sense of life without meaning and purpose, lay it down at the foot of the cross, and then receive the gift that only Jesus can bring, life in all its fullness, fullness of life. Beautiful, beautiful <laughs> gifts that Jesus offers us. Before we look at this fourth really heavy piece of baggage. Uh, we've got a couple of stories of people who have experienced the freedom that only Jesus can bring. So please watch this. Hi, I'm Kezia. From an early age up until kind of my late teens, I suffered quite badly with anxiety and depression and it affected my life in so many ways. I couldn't go out with my friends or do fun things with my friends. I felt like I was trapped in this never-ending spiral of fear. It was on my mind every second of the day and, and I couldn't get away from it. And even with the support of my friends and family, this fear just took over and I couldn't see a way out. I realized that I couldn't do anything in my own strength. I had to give it over to God. I remember saying out loud, God, I give it all to you. I hand over all of my fears, all of my worries and stresses to you. I, I can't do it on my own. I need you to take over. And I think that was the moment that everything changed because I wasn't living my life on my own. I asked God to walk with me. I can't believe I'm where I am now going from someone who was so fearful that they wanted to end their life to having a hope for the future. I'm living in freedom, knowing that God is by my side and that he's never gonna leave me. 
So by the end of my teenage years, I realized the world was a very big place and I was incredibly small within it. And I had this big hole in my life. And I became anxious and depressed and I started seeking for answers everywhere that I could look. I lent into smoking weed. I looked into philosophies and ideologies from ancient cultures and nothing ever satisfied or gave me peace. And I had this one Christian friend who really just slowed into me and, and just relentlessly talked about Jesus and I always ignored him until this one point where my life had spiraled massively and I was in a real moment of desperation and I called out on Jesus and in that moment I realized that Jesus was the answer that I was looking for. And from being completely anxious, I now had a really secure sense of peace in my life on a daily basis, truly being set free from all of these things that bound me in my life before. And the transformation was so real that even now my sister has come to the faith and she's putting her trust in Jesus now to change her life. Jesus is at the center of everything that I do now. I just want to see people experience that same level of freedom. <clears throat> Two great stories of the freedom that Jesus brings. We come now to this fourth heavy bag. And it's something deliberately to the side, because often we don't think about it, but it's there in the background all the time. And it is the fear of death, the fear of death. In our culture, we don't like to think about it or talk about it unless we have to. But the reality is, the fear of death is kind of there all the time. One of the founding fathers of the United States allegedly quipped, there are only two things certain in life, death and taxes. But you see, the problem with death is not only that it's inevitable, but it all seems so final casting a big shadow over life. That is, without Easter. The story of a wife and her continually grumpy husband who were on a holiday in Jerusalem. While they were there, the husband died. The mortician told the wife, you can ship him home for 5,000 pounds or you can bury him here in the Holy Land for only 150 pounds. The woman thought about it for a minute, then decided she would have him shipped home. The mortician asked the woman, why would you spend 5,000 pounds to ship your husband home when he could be buried here in Jerusalem for only 150 pounds? The wife replied, well, long ago a man died here, was buried here, and three days later he rose from the dead. I just can't take that chance. <laughs> Good joke. Even better news is that for the first Easter 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ really did die on the cross. He was buried and three days later, he triumphed over from, from the dead. He rose and is alive forevermore. And that's why we don't need to carry this weight of the fear of death because Jesus Christ triumphed over death. It says uh, in Hebrews chapter two, he came to free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. I don't know about you, but I remember growing up, before I became a Christian, I had a fear of death. All seemed so morbid, all so, I didn't know what was beyond death. The moment I became a Christian, that fear just left. I came, I just had this, this deep conviction that death was not the end, but it was like a doorway into a, a better and an eternal future. Uh, I can identify with the words of Billy Graham, world famous preacher who once said, someday you will read that Billy Graham is dead. Don't believe a word of it. I shall be more alive than I am now. I will have just changed a dress. I love it. In other words, we have the confidence that when we die, death is not the end. We go to a, a glorious place called heaven uh, in the presence of God. But that's not the end point. That's not actually the ultimate. It's just the starting point. It's the resting place. The real hope of Easter is that just as Jesus Christ physically conquered death, and rose in a glorious new body. He ate fish, he could be recognized, he could be conversed with. So the promise of Easter is just as Jesus in the middle of history conquered death, so when he returns at the end of history, everybody who's born again and put their faith in him, they too will be raised up, receive glorious new bodies for eternity, living in the new heavens on the new earth in a life that is gonna be far, far better than this one 
where there is no more death, no more mourning, no more sorrow, and no more pain. That is the great hope of Easter. And we don't wait to get there to decide and make the choice. No, we decide now. And here's the promise, that when we come to Jesus, we receive new birth now into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. So this Easter, final invitation, if you like, is to take this heavy weight of the fear of death and once and for all lay it at the foot of the cross and receive from the risen Jesus himself the hope of resurrection. The hope of resurrection. As you look at these amazing gifts and look at the weights that we can be free from, the reality is is that the only way to get these is through Jesus Christ. It's not like we pick, oh, I'll, I'll pick a bit of peace if that's all right. No, all these things come together. When you receive Jesus, you get forgiven. That leads to a life of peace. That means we can experience life in its fullness and the hope of resurrection. You see, that's what happened to me 40 years ago. I, 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 I didn't earn it. I didn't deserve it. None of us can. Jesus paid for us to receive this. He's made it available, but nonetheless, like gifts, we have to receive them. And you say, well, how do we do that? Well, the way that I did it and the way that literally billions of people throughout history have done it is almost a simple prayer, a prayer of inviting the giver himself, the risen Lord Jesus, through the power of his Holy Spirit to come into our life and to give us the forgiveness, the peace, the fullness of life and the hope that we so desperately need. Now, maybe you're here today or you're watching online and you've never made that kind of decision. Maybe this is your first time ever to a church service like this. We're delighted you're here, but even more than that, I want to give you an invitation to receive the most transformational, most wonderful gift of all, which is to receive Jesus Christ into your life. I'm also conscious at Easter, maybe you're here and you're somebody and you are a Christian and you're here because of that, but you know your life has not been going Jesus' way. In fact, your life looks a lot more like this right now. You feel burdened by some of this stuff and you can maybe add to this list of things you feel weighed down by, but that's not God's will for you. He wants you to live in all the freedom that he came to purchase for you. And so today may be your day to say, I want to come back to the Lord. I want to re-surrender my life. I want to live fully for Jesus once again. And then for all of us, I'm sure we could all do with just reaffirming our faith in the risen Jesus. So what I want to do is I'd like to pray a prayer with you. And um, one maybe just ask you if you, you, um, you could just close your eyes right now. And I'm going to pray this prayer of inviting Jesus. It's a prayer of surrendering to him. It's a prayer of coming to him. We're gonna ask for his forgiveness, for him to change our lives. I'll pray a phrase at a time. I want to invite all of you to join in this prayer, particularly those who are praying this for the first time or as a recommitment to him. So will you pray after me? Lord Jesus, I come to you now. Thank you for dying on the cross and rising from the dead so that I can be set free. I ask you to forgive me and to help me to turn away from everything that is weighing me down. Please come into my life by the power of your Holy Spirit and fill me with your forgiveness peace, fullness of life, and hope of resurrection. In your name I pray. Amen. Why don't we just celebrate all that has happened in that moment. <clears throat> now, if you prayed that either for the first time or you recommitted your life to the Lord, I want to be the first to congratulate you. It is <clears throat> the best the most important decision you could have ever have made. And we'd love to hear about the decision you've made. But we also want to help you <clears throat> on your journey because you see, becoming a Christian and experiencing this, if you like, this initial freedom 
is actually the start of a journey of ongoing and ever increasing freedom. And you know, my experience of 40 years, it's not a journey that we're called to do on our own. So we'd love to hear about the decision you've made and we'd love to do all we can to, to help you. And so um, for those online, <clears throat> um, we'd, we'd love you just to let us know. But also if you made that decision, why don't you just text in on the number you'll see on the screen. Um, <clears throat> or um, you can just uh, scan in the QR code just to let us know, I made a decision to invite Jesus into my life, or today, this Easter, I've recommitted my life to Jesus, and we'll do all we can to help you. And alongside letting us know, we, what we wanna do is we wanna give you some resources that will help you on your freedom journey. You'll see them up there. We've got uh, a copy of the New Testament where you can find out uh, more about Jesus and about the life of freedom that he's come uh, to help you live in. We've got a little uh, book on how to read the Bible, a book on how to know God personally, uh, a book on why Easter that will unpack a bit more of what I've been sharing. And because it's Easter, <clears throat> we're gonna give some chocolate too. So, so lots of um, great resources there. So if you're watching online, <clears throat> please let us know uh, your details and we'll send them through to you if you're here in the room today, um, then we'd love you to pick up one of these resource bags afterwards in the atrium. So just to give a few moments for people just to be texting in or scanning in uh, their details, letting us know the decision they've made. I want to include all of us in this response moment. You see, it's possible to be a Christian and still to need greater levels of forgiveness and peace. Have you found that? It's possible to be a Christian and still be burdened by some of these things. And so I want you to, as this song is being sung and the band are just ministering to us, why don't you take a moment to think about areas where you need freedom and then I'll come and we'll pray together. So uh, let's let the band lead us. Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom? Such boundless grace The God of ages Stepped down from glory To wear my sin And bear my shame The cross is spoken I am forgiven The King of kings calls me His own Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Hallelujah, praise the one who sent me free. Hallelujah, death has lost its grip. I love just to lead us all now in a moment of prayer. You might, again, just like to close your eyes and if you're at home, you can join in. Maybe an area of weight that you feel you're carrying. Maybe it is to do with past mistakes. Maybe there's an area of anxiety that you're battling with. Whatever it is, maybe fear of death. Just imagine that like a piece of baggage. And right now in this moment, why don't you just, as it were, hand it to Jesus. And as you do, receive his peace. Receive his cleansing. Receive his healing. Receive his Holy Spirit.
receive his hope. Sense right now, the Lord just freeing people from despair and disappointment, despondency, filling you with fresh hope. As you feel burdened and weighed down, maybe even depressed, in the name of Jesus, I pray, the heavy burden be lifted off and life and health come to you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Well, now we're gonna have some baptisms. Across this weekend, we've got 27 people who are getting baptized, three in this service. If you've never been to a, a, a baptismal service, let me just briefly explain. You're gonna see people come down into this baptistry. They're gonna go down into the water, plunged under it and brought up again. And it's a beautiful public symbol of what happens when a person becomes a Christian. See, they've already made a decision to follow Jesus. And in, do, in so doing, as they go under the water, they're identifying with Jesus Christ, who died, was buried. And as they come back up again, they're saying, I've been raised up with Jesus Christ into a new life of freedom. But because it's a decisive spiritual moment, we're gonna celebrate, we're also gonna pray that they are gonna experience new levels of freedom in their lives. They're gonna come as it were and stuff's gonna get left behind and they're gonna come up feeling freer than ever before. And so why don't we just um, welcome them as they come, those who are getting baptized. And then I'd like to invite you all to stand. And you're going to see their stories on the screen. As they come back up, we're going to give them a big cheer. Okay, so let's sing, let's celebrate with these people getting baptized. I was buried beneath my shame. Could carry that kind of weight. It was my tomb until I met you. I was breathing, but not alive. 
is heavy The chains break back the way to the old glory I needed shelter, I was an orphan But you call me a citizen of heaven Well, thank you so much for joining us for Easter at Kingsgate Online. We really hope you enjoyed this special celebration service. If you responded as Dave just led us, perhaps you prayed the prayer to receive Jesus into your life for the first time, or as a way of recommitting your life to Jesus, we would love to know about it. Yeah, and like Dave said, we've got a gift for you and we'd love to send these resources to you to help you on your journey with Jesus. That's right, so if you haven't already, just follow the details on screen to either text in or scan the QR code to let us know that you're responding. This really is the most amazing decision and we cannot wait to hear from you. Or it might be that for some of you, what you heard today has got you thinking and you'd like to begin exploring the Christian faith more. In which case, Alpha is a great place to start. And you can find out more about the Alpha course, which will be starting in a couple of weeks over on our website. So why not check that out and sign up to take part? We're really looking forward to joining together online again next Sunday and to kicking off our new series called This Is Our God. It's going to be great and we'd love for you to carry on joining us online. Yes, until then though, enjoy the rest of your Easter and we get to enjoy these. Come on. Come on, bye. bye.